Hello and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Sorry for not having the webcam on. I'm having some troubles with my webcam and I've already ordered a new one, but it's not there yet. So, and also I also wanted to tell you that, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for not having published a new video in a long time, but uh, I've been in a transition phase at the moment where I moved to a new role uh, to, and also to a new company. If you've been following me, on LinkedIn, then you probably have uh, seen the news. So yeah, that has been a great journey so far. So really looking forward to what's the future going to bring. So let's get back to this video. It's gonna be a short one. It's um, inspiration from one of the recent comments that I've uh, received on my channel. And the topic for today is, let's zoom in a little bit, is, um, what happens or how can we duplicate one file from a library in SharePoint and while duplicating or before we duplicate it, um, how can we also enter some information? So um, I've kept it simple and what I've done is I've created a column which just writes down if it's a duplicate or not. This will be populated automatically after the flow has run. And we always have standard to set to no. And if the flow runs, which is a duplicate item flow, it will always set it to yes. Otherwise it doesn't make any sense. And what I did is I added this column here, reason for duplication, which does only um, allow the user to enter like a text information for why the he or she, they are duplicating this file. You can extend this with many more columns and many more information that you require for your use case, but for this demo, I wanted to keep it simple. So yeah, if you like the video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and that you subscribe to the channel, have fun. So as I said, we created these two columns. This is pretty easy, just add a column and then create the ones that you need. And um, I will post also in the video description the original video for this workflow, which we built a while back. And what I did here is that in the manual um, trigger, I added this, uh, can you see it? It's too small, I think, let me zoom in a little bit. Bum, 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 bum. So. I think now it's better. So I added this manual input here. Now you can add more inputs. If you click there, you can have like text, yes or no columns. You can even add more files, uh, email addresses, numbers, and dates. So what I added is uh, this reason for duplication because I want the user to be able to add this information when they click duplicate the file. And that's it. And the rest is the same. So we get the file properties from that file that we just triggered uh, the workflow from. And we get it's also its file content because the file content is the actual file um, when you open it, you know, like image or PDF or whatever. And the file properties are all this uh, metadata that we see here. So we need both so that we can populate them again in the new created file. When we have here the create file uh, step where we create this file in the same uh, folder path, which is um, the invoice parent, you can create it also in another folder, doesn't matter, just change the path here. And what I also did is, uh, since I am in the same folder, I added this information here, duplicate underscore ID, and I populate this with the ID from the get file properties, you know, from the original file. And he, this was, I think, one of the one test run here. And you see that my um, duplicate file, which is the EQB350, has the DUB underscore ID and then the ID of this file, no, which was number two. Uh, let's see if I can add it here real quick. Show hide columns and give me the ID, apply. Now it's at the end. Let's bring it here and you will see that the ID number two from this one is now in here. And then this is how I ensure that these files do, do not uh, replace each other because in documents you cannot have the same name. You know? So, and um, what else, what else? Yeah, I also updated this file property step because here's where we add the metadata. And what we want to add here is um, these two columns that I created. The reason for duplication, this one comes from, let's see in the dynamic values, 
from the manual input, which is here at the top, which we'll see in a second that the user enters. And the one that we created was the reason for duplication, which was this one here. And we add it now here in the column reason for duplication. And the is duplicate value, I always set it to yes, huh? because if this flow runs, it's a duplicate item flow, it will duplicate, so it will always be yes if it runs successfully. So um, that's, with it. That's, that's it with the changes. Let's see how it runs. So I'm going to go back to my invoices parent library and let's duplicate this Kia configurator here, blah, 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 PDF. And what I'm going to do is we have here our copy file uh, button, which again, as I said, I will post the original video and then you can see there how we created this button and that workflow. And uh, this is just like an add on to that video. So after clicking here, you will be prompted with the um, run flow view. I haven't even renamed the flow property properly. So you see these uh, steps here, but make sure that you put a proper name for your workflow. And now we see this reason for duplication, which we have here. So this is a duplication for testing per poses. And then I'm gonna click run flow. And after a while, let's go back. Okay, we'll see that this five seconds ago, it failed. Okay, why did it fail now? Bad request, bad request. Do you not, do you not find something or? Outwards. If I will the name voice parent, blah, blah, already exists. Ah, okay, I got it, that's the problem. So that's why you need to come up with an ID if you are duplicating them in the same, um, in the same file because this one was born to be, going to be renamed with its ID. No? So it will write duplicate ID two, and that file already exists. So you, you cannot do it that way. No? So you need to come up with an incremental ID so that um, you always have like one, two, three, four, five, it adds up. So let's see how we can do that real quick. 2000 years later. This is way too complicated. We can do it much easier because we have here a column called uh, modified by or modified, sorry. And that's the date. So we can just add that date. Instead of doing this crap here, let's uh, delete this column and uh, refresh. Okay, create file, we don't need that. We duplicate ID, we don't need that either. Let's write that this is a duplicate. Let's add here the timestamp from get file properties, uh, modified, modified, the when the item was last changed. And then let's save this. Mm. Yeah, let's remove that. Duplicate reason, okay. Let's save it. And let's test it out. I'm going to delete these duplications again. Sorry guys, but we did some troubleshooting shooting together. So let's duplicate the Mercedes and it will ask us for the test, the duplication reason, which is testing and run flow. Okay, refresh, refresh. There it is and we have this huge timestamp here. Now what you can do also is you can make it a little bit shorter. Like, I don't know, something like date only or something like that. But again, time might also be necessary. I can, this I can leave it with you. So now if we want to go here and duplicate this duplication, we can say that the copy file is gone. Okay. There it is. And testing again. 
run flow, refresh, refresh, and then there it is again. And because we have this um, change here in the, what is it, seconds, we can see that we can duplicate the same one many times, as many times as we want. And that's it, yeah. So again, as I said, you can add here more options to uh, do changes or to write down in your copy file button. Here, I only have one, but you can add many more. And then you can um, see how you can make this even more uh, suitable for your use case. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Sorry for the long troubleshooting session, but uh, this is how I go and troubleshoot these errors, no? which I handle uh, every day. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And um, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments as well. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel and that you follow me on LinkedIn so that you don't miss anything new. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you on the next video. Take care, bye-bye.